probably heard that plastics are bad. Facts like 12 million tons of plastics enters our oceans every year. Or that one study found that 100% of the marine and water samples that they tested contain microplastics. Or one fact that upsets every environmentally conscious person that I know, only 5% of plastics are actually recycled. That's right, 95% of plastics aren't actually recycled in the U.S. So much for rinsing out those takeout containers. And these are all true, sobering facts. And after hearing all of these, you may have come to one conclusion. Plastics are terrible, maybe even evil. And when you get rid of all plastics... But I'm a material scientist, and that means I spend most of my days looking for new material solutions to solve our existing problems. And I believe that we can engineer plastics for good. Plastics that are not only better for our environment, but that actually solve our environmental problems. Right now, we're in one of the worst droughts in U.S. history. In the winter, when it does snow, we apply salt to our roads, metric tons of it, to keep cars from slipping off the roads. You may even apply salt to your walkway or your driveway. But this salt enters our environment, and it makes our drought problems worse. It affects our plants and our crops, makes our soil and water saltier, affects our farmlands and our ecosystems. And this isn't just a U.S. thing. Worldwide, we apply obscene amounts of road salt. And if we don't stop using road salt, some areas in the U.S. may have drinking water that is too salty for human consumption in the next century. Already, some areas have excessive levels of sodium, all due to road salt. And so as a material scientist, I wanted to know, is there a solution to this in plastics? Plastics that would actually work with our environment. And that's how I figured out how to make plastics out of fish. Well, sort of. You see, plastics today aren't engineered with the environment in mind. They're meant to be cheap and durable and look good on a shelf. But we've come up against what I call the paradox of plastic. We know that plastics are damaging the environment, but we can't live without them. Plastics simply make modern life possible. Things like contact lenses that are soft enough to be comfortable, or glue that's strong enough to hold composite aircraft together. In fact, everything you see around you relies on plastics, one way or another. And I believe that we can develop a harmonious relationship with plastics. But that means understanding where they come from and what they do once they enter the environment because plastics aren't going away. Literally, they can't. Why? Because all those little microorganisms that eat our apple cores and banana peels simply don't see plastics as food. And that's the real problem with plastics. Microorganisms simply can't break them down. If you throw a cotton T-shirt into the ocean, and I do not recommend this, <laughs> About 70% of it will disappear in about a month. If you throw a polyester plastic T-shirt into the ocean, it will still be there one month later. But that's where things get interesting. You see, nature already has a type of plastic in the form of polymers, materials that are made out of lots and lots of little parts called monomers. In fact, everything you see in nature, from butterfly wings to DNA, is made out of polymers. And that's all plastic really is. A synthetic polymer made out of lots and lots of little monomers, and then molded into shape. And so it was inspired by all the plants and animals in nature that have evolved to deal with ice. Animals like the Antarctic cod, an incredible fish that makes polymers in the form of antifreeze proteins. 
This allows the Antarctic cod to live and thrive in the sub-freezing waters of the Antarctic Ocean. And when it doesn't need them anymore, the Antarctic cod can simply break them down. And so I wanted to know, can we do the same thing? As it turns out, we can. Computer simulations have shown that antifreeze proteins have specific structures that allow them to bind to ice, specific structures that we can replicate with materials like polyvinyl alcohol, a material that can be formed to mimic the antifreeze proteins found in Antarctic cod. And from this material, from this plastic, we can create a material that can be applied to roadways or walkways to prevent freezing, which means no more salty walkways, no more salty drinking water. And there's a good chance you've seen this plastic before. Ever heard of a detergent pod? You know, those squishy little cubes that you throw into your laundry or dishwasher? Well, the plastic that holds that detergent inside is actually polyvinyl alcohol. And the reason you can throw it into your laundry or your dishwasher is because polyvinyl alcohol will dissolve and microorganisms will break it down harmlessly, which means it's safe for our environment, it's safe for our drinking water. And so, like most things in life, plastic isn't all good or all bad. It's more complicated than that. Instead, we can strive to engineer new plastics, plastics for good. So the next time your car is not slipping on ice, you just might have a fish or plastics to thank. Thank you. <laughs>